A huge thank you to Atomos for sponsoring this show. You can find more content like this over on the Atomos YouTube channel under the Atomos Academy. Be sure to check it out and subscribe there as well. If I told you that you could synchronize your video and audio content with perfect timecode sync on an Atomos Ninja 5, along with another Atomos Ninja 5, plus a camera like the Lumix GH5S, which has timecode support via the PC port, or a camera like the Lumix G9, which doesn't have timecode support at all, a recorder like the Shogun 7, which has good old-fashioned timecode input, the app Mavis on iOS, which is an advanced video recorder, including timecode support, 32-bit float audio on a Zoom F6, video on a GoPro, audio recorded on the Meta Recorder app on iOS, and your slates using Movie Slate 8. Is that something you might be interested in? Yeah? Well, let's get into it. Let's start by answering the question, why? Why bother with timecode? If timecode is there to synchronize your shots, can't you just do that with the audio track? I mean, every modern NLE will easily take multiple clips with audio on them, find how they sync up, and build a perfect multicam clip. And that's perfectly fine if you're in a small set like this here, and all the cameras are close enough to you to hear everything you say. However, if you're on a bigger set, maybe you've got a camera that's farther away, up on a rooftop or down the road, out of range of being able to hear your subjects, then audio sync's not gonna work. Or maybe shooting into a car. You've got a couple characters in a car shooting a dialogue scene, you're outside of the car, or maybe the camera's even mounted on the car and so you have wind noise to contend with. In these situations, audio is simply not gonna work. Or maybe you're on a really big location like a football field and you have cameras all over the field and they're shooting all at different times, starting and stopping throughout the game, and you wanna make sure that all of those cameras can be brought into perfect sync. Audio is never gonna work in that situation. There's lots of reasons you may want to use timecode. So let's talk about how to do it, starting with the Atom X Sync. This little guy right here attaches to the back of your Ninja 5, and it actually sits between the Ninja 5 itself and the battery. So this actually has a couple of neat tricks up its sleeve, but at its core, it is a timecode transceiver. That means it can both transmit and receive timecode. This device can be the master or the slave on the network. Once this is attached to the Ninja 5 and you slide your battery in here like so, you now have everything you need to generate timecode and record accurate timecode onto your track. Since the battery attaches to the back of it, Atomos built into this a small battery itself so that when you're shooting, if your battery starts to go low but you don't want to stop recording, you can actually take this battery out, swap it with another one, put it back on without ever stopping. Now there's a few other neat tricks on this device, but we'll talk about those in a minute. Let's go ahead and get it attached to the Ninja. I'll go ahead and attach it to the back and power it on. And there's a couple of things we're going to want to configure in here. Let's start by going into the timecode menu. And you'll see up here that you have a source that you need to choose. The source should be set to Atom X Sync. That's this device itself. But what timecode is it actually going to use? If I go into the set timecode menu, I can choose it to be time of day or I can set it manually. But I'll leave it at time of day and set for non-drop frame and then tap set timecode. This now sets the master clock for all the other devices on the network. You'll also notice over here that there is a calibrate button. Now this is critically important when working with an HDMI camera. As you undoubtedly know, HDMI cameras deliver their video and audio a little bit later than real time, somewhere between two and maybe eight or nine frames, just depending on the camera. This is inevitable with an HDMI device. It simply takes time to process the data from the camera sensor and get it out over HDMI. And the problem is that the camera is gonna send the video and audio a little bit late, but the Atomos recorder won't necessarily know that. So we need to program in the delay into the recorder. Fortunately, that's really easy to do. We don't have to guess or test. There's a built-in calibration tool on the device. All you have to do is take a audio cable and plug it into the headphone jack on the Ninja 5 and then tap the calibrate button. The Ninja 5 will play an audio tone out of the headphone jack and the other end of this is plugged into the microphone jack on the camera. The camera will receive it and then send that back over the HDMI port up to the Ninja. The Ninja will calculate the difference and set the timecode difference for you. So I'll go ahead and tap on calibrate and calibrate again. It measures it and it says there's a delay of six frames. I'll go ahead and tap accept and now that's programmed into it. Next I'll go to the sync config menu and under here we'll see that this particular unit is set to be the master. It's also set to channel seven. So that means that any devices that I want to connect to this on the network, all I have to do is put them into slave mode and set it to the same channel. 
You'll also see here a region. It's currently set to North America because that's where I am. And the great thing about these devices is they can be used anywhere in the world. You simply change the region depending on where you are so that the device can operate at the correct and legal operating frequency for that part of the world. Next, you'll see Bluetooth. You can actually pair up to six Bluetooth devices to the Atom X sync. We'll talk more about that later on. The last thing you might have noticed up here is that there is a record control button that is currently set to on. What this means is that if that is enabled, when I tap record on this Ninja 5, any other Ninja 5 or GoPro on the network will automatically start recording as well. Now let's check out our other Ninja and make sure that it's on the same network. I'll go into the timecode settings and under sync config, make sure it's set to slave and on the same RF channel as seven. That's it. These are now in sync. Because of the frame offset programmed into both recorders, which might actually be a little bit different for each camera, if you were to shoot video of these screens in slow motion and play it back frame by frame, you might see that there actually is a timecode difference. Remember that is there as the offset, which is required so that everything lines up in post between all the different cameras. All right, next let's add one of these other cameras to the list. And to do that, we're gonna use this. This tiny little timecode device will connect to the master on your network and keep perfect sync along with everything else. Why is the sync so good? Well, it utilizes a quartz crystal inside of each and every single one of these devices, keeping extremely accurate timecode. In fact, as long as they're connected, the timecode is perfect. But if they get disconnected, which would be pretty hard to do on most sets because the range is over 150 meters, you'll find that the timecode will only drift less than a single frame over the course of 12 hours. And then as soon as the devices come within range of each other, they'll find each other, say hello, and start to slowly drift back into sync keeping perfect time code across all of your devices. Now, this little guy can be used in a lot of different situations. I'm gonna go ahead and start by using this on the GH5S. The GH5S can accept time code through the PC port with a special cable adapter that comes with the camera. I'm gonna take the BNC cable that came with the UltraSync 1 and just connect the two. At this point, the GH5S isn't yet reading the time code. I actually have to go into the menu and tell it to read the time code from this device. So I'll go into the menu, navigate to the timecode option, and under external timecode settings, tap link, timecode input, hit OK, and then hit OK again. And as soon as I do that, the timecode will be read from this device. Now at this point, the GH5S is actually going to start keeping its own timecode, and it doesn't have a quartz crystal in it, so it's not going to be quite as accurate as this is, which means you're going to want to jam sync probably a couple times throughout your shooting day. But this also means that now I can take this off and use it somewhere else. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here, on the Shogun 7. The Shogun makes it really easy. The Shogun has good old fashioned timecode input on the back, so all I need to do is plug the included BNC cable into the UltraSync 1, and that's it. Next, let's get the G9 on the network. Now, the G9 poses a particular challenge because it, like pretty much every consumer camera, doesn't have direct timecode support. Sure, you might find a timecode menu in the camera, but that doesn't mean that it can actually read timecode externally, which is what we need here. So while we can't make the camera read the timecode from any device, what we can do is put the timecode on the audio track, and then using software on the computer, we'll be able to pull that timecode out of the audio track and embed it as proper timecode. And we're gonna embed it with this, another UltraSync 1. All I have to do is take this special cable that goes from the UltraSync 1 into the audio port and plug it in. As soon as I do, we'll see on the audio level meters that it's receiving something, and we know that that's the time code. Now with this particular cable, we're actually feeding the time code to both the left and the right channel, which means that this camera can no longer record regular audio. There's another cable you can get that will actually feed the time code to one channel and then open up the other channel for another microphone input. So you can still have audio and time code on the same channel. Next, let's go to the GoPro. The GoPro has a dedicated back called the sync back. This is a tiny little timecode device that simply nestles in the back of your GoPro using a specialized little case that comes with it. You simply drop this into place, close the door, latch it tight, and then connect the two using an included USB cable. It's just a tiny little USB-C to USB-C cable. Plug those in and now they can talk to each other. I'll fire up the camera and immediately it's gonna find and sync up with the network. Now this camera's ready to go. And remember, when I start recording on the Ninja, it's actually gonna start recording on the GoPro as well. Now let's go to our audio recorder. Using the Zoom F6, I can record 32-bit float audio with perfect timecode sync. And that timecode sync actually happens 
because of a Bluetooth module. This is an add-on to the Zoom F6 that allows the Zoom to connect to various Bluetooth devices. In our case, of course, we're going to use it to connect to the timecode network. Now, remember I mentioned Bluetooth earlier. This right now is going to be connected to the Master Ninja here, but it could also be connected to this little guy here, the blue. We'll come back to this. For now, let's just take a quick look in the menus. I'll go into the menu system and navigate to System, Bluetooth, Timecode, and then Connect. If you've never paired them before, then you'll need to go onto the master and start Bluetooth pairing. The two devices will find each other and you'll go ahead and accept that. But in this case, I've already paired them. So now that I've told it to connect, within a few moments, it has actually found the master network. And up here, we can see, if I go to the sync network, I can see the Bluetooth F6 listed there for me. Next, let's talk about our iOS devices. I have here an iPhone running Apogee's Meta Recorder app along with a special cable from Sennheiser that is a lightning microphone. This app connects directly to the Bluetooth network. You'll see there's an option in here to enable Bluetooth timecode, and it tells you what device is currently connected to. In this case, it's connected to the Blue 80, which happens to be this little guy right here. Now, what this does is connects to the network like any other timecode device, but its purpose in life is to be a Bluetooth broadcaster. This means that you can connect other Bluetooth devices to this instead of to the master over there. Now, why would you want to do that? Why not just connect to that master? Well, remember, Bluetooth doesn't have very good range. So if you wanted to be able to get your Bluetooth device farther away from the master, you wouldn't be able to do it without dropping that Bluetooth connection. This, however, has much better range, and it has that quartz crystal in it, so it keeps perfect time code, even if it does go out of range of the master device. Then to here, you can connect your Bluetooth devices to make sure that they're all in sync, and that's what I've done with this phone here. Imagine the scenario where you're walking around a location with an iPhone and a microphone with this in your pocket, making sure that you keep perfect sync with everything else going on around you. We also have the Mavis app, an advanced video recorder for iOS with timecode support. I'll go to settings, scroll down to timecode, and you'll see that the timecode is set to the UltraSync Blue. So it too is connected to the same blue device. Now, one of the other features that this has is it can actually pull the exact frame rate from the master. So if I had this camera set to say 24p, but I had the master set to 2997, this will communicate that and reset this camera to make sure it's shooting at the right time code. And finally, we have our slate. I'll grab the iPad and on the time code screen, tap the time code and tap sync. This is going to ask what I want to connect to, the Atomos Bluetooth device, and I'll connect to it. It's going to search for it. And just as before, if we hadn't paired it already, I'd start pairing on the master but I have, so it finds it. And we'll see up here where it says cam one, that is the master that it is now synced to. So that's all the devices. Everything is currently in sync. Let's go ahead and record some video and then take those shots into the editing suite and see what happens. I'm gonna start with the master ninja. I'll tap record on the master and that immediately starts the master and the slave ninja five. And you may have heard that the GoPro started recording as well. Now let's go ahead and fire up the GH5S and the G9. And then let's get the audio recorders going. We'll start with the iOS one. Let's not forget the Shogun over here. And then I'll take the camera on the iPhone. And then let's not forget about the Zoom F6 itself. So I think we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and turn everything off and take it into the editing suite. I've already copied all the clips into Final Cut Pro and named them so we can see where each one came from. Let's have a look. The first shot is the Ninja 5 Master followed by the Ninja 5 Slave. And then there's the GoPro after it the GH5S with the embedded timecode, the G9 with the audio timecode, which I've already converted to normal timecode using a third-party app. Unfortunately, Final Cut Pro doesn't do this natively, neither does Premiere. Actually, Resolve does, but in this case, I used an app called LTC Convert. Let me show it to you real quick. This is LTC Convert, and basically all I have to do is drag my clips in here, click on Scan for LTC, it'll find the timecode in there, and then I click on Render New to create a new version of the clip. At this point, I could transcode the media as well. I've already rendered this out and brought it back into Final Cut Pro, so let's get back to that. Next up is the Meta Recorder audio app, the Shogun 7, the Mavis recording, and the Zoom F6. You may have noticed that I've sorted these by time code and they are in the order that they were created. There's the first two shots started at the exact same time, the GoPro starting just four frames later, again, triggered automatically by the Ninja 5 Master, followed by the GH5S, the G9, and so on. I'll go ahead and select all of these, right click and choose new multicam clip. And the only thing you really have to change in here is to make sure that you disable use audio for synchronization. If you leave that on, then even though there's time code, Final Cut's going to scan the audio of all the clips, which will take a really long time to line things up. 
we don't need that. So I'll go ahead and make sure that's disabled. And from here, I could actually just use automatic settings. But if I want to be super sure that it's using the timecode, under angle synchronization, I can set that to timecode. I've also already named the camera angles in the order that I want them to assemble in. This is a good way to ensure that the cameras that you want on camera one, two, three, and so on are in that order. I'll go ahead and click OK. And there's the multicam clip. Let's open that up. And you can see the entire assembly here on the timeline. If we go to the very beginning of this and you look at the multicam view, you'll see the first two cameras that started at the same time. And then I'll just advance forward one, two, three, four frames. And there is that third angle coming online. And then I'll just start scrubbing through and we'll see the rest of them appear. So there's camera four, five, six, of course, is audio. There's seven and eventually eight's on there. Now let's look at the source timecode viewer to make sure that everything's lined up. And sure enough, there's all the clips with all their time codes in perfect alignment. I don't know about you, but I find that syncing by timecode is so much more reliable and so much easier than doing it with audio. As you saw, it synchronizes instantly. There's no waiting and there's no errors. If the timecode is there, then it's gonna line up to it. It's really a great way to do a production. Obviously on a really big set, it's critical, but even on a smaller production, like for YouTube videos, like I'm doing here, this can be invaluable. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting and educational and we'll see you in the next one.